Uh, for me, this workshop was, was very critical for, for the country uh, because uh, we all required to take action, particularly to save our environment because then there's health hazard posed by these uh, toxic emissions in, 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 our, in our climate, in our environment and uh, we've seen the, the impact that it had, if I can point particularly here in Cape Town, uh, of which then we've never seen drought in this part of the country but uh, due to climate change then it's, it's visible that uh, it's no longer about uh, you know, uh, being more scientific and, and, and all kind of stuff, it's, it, it's real, it's happening. But basically, if I, if I, if I may take you back to, to where we come from with these um, issues of trying to mitigate uh, and uh, to reduce uh, GHG emissions, uh, as part of, of the global community and as part of the UN structure, uh, it adopted uh, the SDGs, I think there are 17 goals, and one of the goals is about the environment, uh, another goal is about the climate itself. So all international communities expected to take action to ensure that uh, we reduce or we mitigate uh, emissions at the national level and also industrial level and in our part uh, on the shipping side because uh, shipping then is also one of the contributors uh, of greenhouse gas, but uh, even though it's at, at the lesser scale compared to the industrial side, to you know, agriculture, mining, and, and so forth. But then uh, even those uh, uh, services that are emitting lesser are expected to play an active role to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. To that extent that the IMO also has a strategy that seeks to align or to implement the UNF Triple C, and also the Kyoto Protocol provisions. Uh, it's not only on the maritime side, including civil aviation. Uh, at IKO, they're doing probably more or less the same uh, as we're doing at uh, the IMO level. So at the IMO, we've got MEPC that uh, adopted so many resolutions and strategies. Uh, uh, particularly MEPC 74 adopted the initial GHG emission strategy for international shipping uh, that talks to MAPO convention as you may know that uh, South Africa is also a state party to MAPO annex 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 so this workshop uh, was particularly touching on annex 6 not the entire Annex 6, but uh, to 0 0.5 sulfur content fuel that is required by 2020, that all ships must take bunker that is compliant. So the, mainly the purpose of the workshop was to check our readiness uh, as far as the industry is concerned, as far as the ships, uh, the bunker industry, and also on the compliant side because uh, we're supposed to be performing port state, flex state, and coastal state responsibilities. Uh, therefore, then, the, the, this, this workshop was, was, was very important for, for all those stakeholders that uh, will be impacted come uh, 1st of January 2020. So we, we, we needed to, to see how far are we, or how close are we to, to readiness come the date. Uh, but uh, when we were deliberating for, for these past three days, there were some positive feedback, particularly coming from the bunkering industry in terms of readiness. But then there's two elements in, in, in terms of readiness, is the quality, which is 0 0.5, and the quantity, because you can be ready, but then uh, we need to be able to cater for all ships uh, that are interested to come and bank in, in, in the country. Uh, so that's why I'm saying then that, uh, that we received some positive feedback, particularly from, from the Bengali in industry. Uh, so, we, But we don't know whether it's going to be imported or our refineries will be geared up to produce that uh, 0.5 sulfur content fuel. 
Yeah, <clears throat> uh, I think uh, on on the implementation and monitoring side, we also need legislation, which will give effect to Annex Six because currently we don't have national legislation. So uh, I think it would be important. It, it would be very important that uh, all the role players, particularly the Department of Transport and SAMSA come up with a plan on how far they can speed up the process in drafting legislation. It's either a standalone bill or incorporate uh, the provisions of the convention, Annex 6, to the current legislation. And, uh, and the way out is just to come up with the regulations which will give effect to the provisions of Annex 6. So there'll, there'll be that kind of discussion that will be very critical between uh, the Department of Transport and SAMSA because then if it goes a bill process, it's a longer process that, uh, it, it, uh, that has to be taken up until uh, NCOP and the National Assembly. Uh, as far as my experience, it doesn't take less than two years. Uh, but uh, if it's uh, the option is to go via the regulations, which is much, is, is much quicker compared to, to the bill, uh, but you still also need to go to the public and consult uh, and follow all the, the legislative processes in order to promulgate even the regulations. But uh, it's a shorter process because the Minister of Transport has those powers to sign the regulations into law. Yeah, that's, that's where we stand particularly. And, and there are so many issues that uh, are not particularly the regulatory in nature. There's economics involved, that uh, what if come 2020, then the industry cannot supply that fuel. But then as far as the IMO is concerned, then the, you cannot punish a ship that wants to comply while the industry is not ready. Then there is kind of an exemption or there is a form that they can fill, it's for now, that uh, you, you try all all avenues but you couldn't find the compliant fuel so you're using the fauna to use non-compliant fuel but then when you get to the next destination that has the compliant fuel and has the legislation in place you might need to debunk that fuel to clean tanks and to load compliant fuel so there's economics involved there because you buy that fuel then now you have to throw it away then what's going to happen to the you know those kind of, of, of arrangements and when you get to the next port, will it have enough reception facilities to receive that uh, non-compliant fuel? And what's the turnaround for that ship to, to, to debunk a clean and load the, the compliant fuel? So those are kind of, 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 of issues that uh, we might tackle that, as, that is outside the regulatory space. And also to have the compliant fuel at what cost? Because uh, uh, I think at the end of the day, then the cost associated with the compliant fuel would be pushed down to the consumer at the end of the day. So therefore, it will be the consumer that will be high, heavily punished because of, of, of such uh, arrangements. <clears throat> it, it's an unfortunate kind of a circumstance because then when you talk economics, then it's, it's, a, it's a different uh, environment. Yeah, but basically that's that's an overall of, of, of where we come from and the the importance of this three day workshop. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we all clear what is supposed to be done uh, from from the industry perspective, from government and from from the the authorities that are supposed to be implementing some of the provisions of Annex Six. Finally, in terms of representation. Um, role players and stakeholders. Are you comfortable that people who should have been here were here? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, generally, I, I think it was a, a good turn up because uh, the Department of Transport was here, Environmental Affairs was here, uh, Energy was, was in the room, the industry, the banker industry was, was in the room, I saw Ibia and uh, uh, Chevron, uh, and then a couple of, 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 of the players that are involved in, in bunkering space. 
yeah, I, I think uh, the, the turn up was good, and uh, uh, I, I think even those that were not able to attend the meeting, I, I think uh, SAMSA should take in a very active role in trying to communicate uh, the importance of the meeting and the outcome as the way forward of what is required to be done and the plan uh, leading to 2020. Yeah, because you obviously you cannot capture everyone in the room because uh, of different schedules, but. Uh, but the essence of, 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 the, of the meeting was there, and the IMO as well. Uh, we received some 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 good uh, participation from the IMO representative, and uh, yeah, I've, I've seen a couple of, of, of people, even the maritime lawyers in academia, was was in the room. So I'm I'm, I'm quite pleased. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you very much.